Morning. <clears throat> I think we are live. Yes, good morning. Hope you are well. If you are coming in at this beautiful time of 5.58, give me a, a hi, a hello. Let me know you are watching. So, how to stay motivated. So, last night we had our um, weekly um, Q&A online seminar, if you like. We had Dr. Adam Bibby come in and we were talking about how to get and stay motivated. And I just want to touch on one thing that came up, which I think is important to reiterate and actually for you to just go and take away today because you can apply it straight away. Because staying motivated is often something that comes up more often than anything, right? Because everyone can get started. You know, that uninformed optimism we have when we get started. It's like, right, I'm, I'm starting something new. I'm super motivated. Week or two passes, then the reality sinks in and we're like, you know, I'm not sure I can do this. And, and if we can get through this part, we're actually onto it. And it might seem like it's going to be a slower journey because we're like, oh, it's not as I'm not doing as much. But actually, it's faster because we keep going. So how do you keep going? So one of the things was obviously, you know, s surrounding yourself with like minded people, which is exactly what we do. And um, Adam's obviously had a look around at what we do and been in, uh, in and around what we do for a um, few months now. And, and it's obviously can see that. And that's great. Surrounding yourself with like minded people. Because when people make suggestions, when people reach out, they ask questions, other people can relate. And that's really, really good. But this part I want to touch on is just something you can go and do now. So which is what they found in the research was that and this was weight loss related, fitness related, health related. People who got the best results and sustained their motivation for long enough. One of the things they did was actually build their confidence and they did this by actually achieving goals. And this might sound really, obviously, obvious, but then it comes back down to the goal because sometimes we set such big goals that even the word goal setting, if I say, right, we're going to, you know, see where you're at, let's set some goals, even the word goals can make people go, oh, I'm not, not doing that because I just get annoyed and I get frustrated. And then it's like, okay, are we just setting a big goal so that we're always looking up there? And Adam actually gave the analogy of cycling up a mountain. We're always looking up there, but actually forgetting how far we come. Look around the other way and you've got a beautiful view. And we never take time to look at the view. And this is where little milestones along the way can be so motivating. And focusing on progress. That's actually why that we do focus on free habits and daily habits. So um, we actually focus on food, fitness and, and focus. So we have free habits you're ticking off a day. Because if you focus on the process and you start to see progress, you can carry on and go, actually, I can do this. Oh, I just did the five minute workout. So if you're looking at a workout and you're thinking there's no work and do that, that's why we have our back to basics workouts. Really gentle, 10, 15 minutes, done. And it's looking at how can I track my progress in any way? to be the key indicator to can I keep going here? Because that's how you build the confidence to have the courage to continue. Because normally we, we hit something and we're like, oh, there's no way I can do that. Or I can't keep this up because it's not sustainable. And then we're losing confidence. And without confidence, we don't do anything. But remember, confidence isn't just given. We have to do something. So it might be that we just need to ask better questions to get better goals. So... One way of doing this is to set a small, really achievable goal. And so small that it sometimes leaves you asking for more. So I'm going to give you an example of bread, okay? Because a lot of people say, oh, I need to give up bread. And I'm like, you actually don't. The research suggests, unless you've got celiac or anything, research actually suggests a lot of people who keep bread in their diet lose more weight. More often because, not because they overeat it, obviously, but because they just don't crave it so much and there's less of that binge restrict cycle. That doesn't mean you have to have it every day. doesn't mean you have to have it every meal, of course. So what might be a better thing is if instead of going, right, I'm, I'm going to give up bread. And then I say, well, how much do you have bread now? And they're like, every day, twice a day sometimes. OK, why don't we just start with Monday? Monday, you just have bread at lunchtime. That's too easy. But then they do it. We do it. We build confidence. Maybe we just try one meal that week. And it's like for lunch this week, I'm going to try something that's not bread related because I'm literally having bread every day. And I don't feel too good when I have it, whatever, whatever the issue is. Or I've lowered my calories now, which is going to contribute to a calorie deficit. And based on what you've just said, Matt, you're going to lose a pound in four weeks just from that one lunchtime meal switch. 
which is quite, quite cool. Small changes add up. You're starting to build that confidence to have the courage to continue. And it might seem slow. I totally get it. But it's actually, what if? Morning, Diana. Give me a hello if you're coming in. What if it was actually faster? Because you kept going for long enough to see the results that you want to see. And if you think about our goals sometimes, if you think about what we say, sometimes I'll ask the question of how much you want to lose. And they're like, oh, two stone. And it's like, or, or what's your goal? And they're like, I want to lose two stone. And that sounds like, and they're a bit like, you know, I know it's unrealistic. And then I say, like, how long, by, by when? They go, well, as, as soon as possible. But I know it's not realistic is what they often say. And then, and then if I said, okay, I always use Christmas, you know, it depends on what, what month we're in. But if I, I say, like, Christmas, and they're like, yeah, yeah, I love by Christmas. But and then I said, okay, could you lose a pound and a half a week? Or two pounds a week? And they're like, yeah, that's that's achievable. Okay, that's all you have to do. And obviously, it's not going to be that linear. You'll have weeks where you go up and down. But that's achievable. And when you break it down, if I ask someone, right, you've got to lose... Your, someone comes to me and they're like, I want to use, lose two stone. They're like, I need to lose 28 pounds. It's like, okay, okay, can you lose one pound 28 times? Yeah, I could do that. So... Break it down. Small habits. Focus on that progress. Let me know in the comments one thing you're going to do today to make that progress. So one thing it will do today that if you do will have the biggest impact on your progress. One thing. In the comments, let me know. Have a great day and speak soon. We are off for our 6.15 and 7am quiz morning. Yeah. Speak soon. Take care.